Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Cassano. I'm the executive director of the Richmond Neighborhood Center and I wanna welcome you all today. Thank you for coming. We are so excited to be hosting the budget signing today. I just gonna tell you a little bit about the Richmond Neighborhood Center for those of you who might not know. The Neighborhood Center offers a number of programs for families, children, seniors, and adults in the Richmond. We strive to be a hub of resources, providing services directly and working with our partner nonprofits at this location, Community Music Center and Cross Cultural Family Center. Whether through our after school programs, our food pantries, or our community festivals, like our upcoming Autumn Moon, we are a center for building community and a sense of belonging for everyone. These are the values that our mayor is committed to and has prioritized in her budget, which she will be signing here today. We are excited to continue partnering and working with the city to create opportunities and strengthen our support for all of our diverse communities all over San Francisco. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you for letting us use this amazing facility which serves so many young people and families across the Rich Richmond District. And welcome to the Richmond, but I know Supervisor Fewer is also anxious to welcome you here. Um, this is an incredible community, and I think that sometimes when we are doing a lot of work in, in City Hall, uh, we forget about so many neighborhoods because we're right there in the middle, and we're downtown, and of course we're in D5 and other areas in D6, but we don't make it to the west side of the city sometimes. We don't make it to the southeast sector of the city, and so my goal as mayor is to make sure that we not only spend more time and provide more resources to various parts of our communities in San Francisco that sometimes have been neglected, um, that we make the right kinds of investments in those communities. And, and so that's why we're here in the Richmond today. Yes, uh, we work with Supervisor Fewer as the budget chair. Uh, this year was absolutely amazing. And yes, she fought for this district, but she also fought to prioritize equity and the things that are important to all San Franciscans. And so it was truly a pleasure to work with her and to get this budget done. Um, <laughs> When I think back to why I got involved in politics in the first place, I think back to the first time that I advocated for resources for the Western Edition uh, to the Board of Supervisors. And that advocacy, Carol Migdon was actually um, on the board um, that time, many, many years ago, um, and a, a big supporter of the communities and equity and, and, and really fighting for resources both here and in Sacramento. Um, and we would show up, we would advocate, we would talk about the importance of our issues, and members of the board would answer the call to make the right investments. Um, yes, we still have a number of challenges in this city, a number of important investments that we know we need to make, and this board of supervisors spent countless hours listening to the public, listening to me sometimes, um, but ultimately putting together what I believe is a very comprehensive budget that is fair, that is equitable, that makes new investments, and that is really focused on accountability as well. And it was under the leadership of President of the Board, Norman Yee, who had really the vision to uh, appoint Sandy Fewer as the budget chair because he knew that she would not take any mess from her colleagues, and they all put forth their ideas, but ultimately, she wanted to make sure that this was a consensus budget, and everyone had something to be proud of. And so thank you to both Supervisor Fewer and President Yee for your leadership. Thank you to Raphael Mandelman, who is here today, and Asha Safai. Um, incredible advocates and supporters for their communities and incredible advocates and supporters for residents of the city. I also like to thank our budget team and Kelly Kurtzpatrick, who is the director of the budget. <laughs> Kelly, stand up, we can't see you.
her countless hours and work to get this budget done. Um, Harvey Rose and his team from the budget and legislative analysts. Now, usually the mayor doesn't thank them, but <laughs> as someone who served on the board of supervisors and has a lot of love for the work that they do to really analyze the budget within a short time period, I just want to thank them as well for their hard work to get this job done. Thank you to our controller, Ben Rosenfield, for crunching the numbers, him and his team. All the department heads, the ones that were grilled hardcore and were able to fight for their resources and get what we needed for the public. I mean, the budget was a battle, but it was a good battle. It was one of the best budget processes I've seen in a really long time. And I'm not just saying that because I, it's my first budget as mayor. Um, I'm saying it because everyone had an opportunity to make a request and have their voices heard. And so I'm just proud of how comprehensive this budget is. And yes, it's the highest budget in our city's history, $12.3 billion. And I don't want people to think we had control over the spending of all these dollars because we do have enterprise departments like the airport, the the Port of San Francisco, the Public Utilities Commission, but ultimately we made some new investments because not only did I spend time having a number of budget town hall meetings all over San Francisco, I know the supervisors spend time with their various constituents and we took that feedback to incorporate it into our budget and I just wanted to highlight a few of the things that I know are some of the most pressing issues that we face in San Francisco. Since I've taken office about a year ago, we have been able to make over a billion dollars of investments in affordable housing throughout the city and county of San Francisco. <laughs> We've been able to do that because our unexpected windfall of the ERAF funding, because of our investments in our current budget, and because you all are gonna pass the $600 billion affordable housing bond this fall without raising property taxes. <laughs> Part of that budget includes not only building new affordable housing and providing support for low and middle income families, it also provides preservation of existing affordable housing. And so I know that uh, preservation around small site acquisition was really important to Supervisor Fewer because of so many seniors in the Richmond District living in some of these buildings that are up for sale and to have the ability to purchase those buildings and protect them for those low income seniors is so critical to the long term stability of affordable housing in San Francisco. So I'm excited about funding for rent subsidies and trying to keep people's ha people housed, our right to civil counsel and making sure that people who are facing eviction are not doing it alone. So many amazing investments in housing and now we just gotta get rid of some of the bureaucracy that gets in the way of housing. Sorry supervisors, I had to. <laughs> Homelessness, which we know is the number one issue that we face in San Francisco. We have additional support for more navigation centers, for more shelter beds, because we know we need them and we need them yesterday. Providing 100% affordable housing with wraparound services for formerly homeless individuals is something that's critical to addressing the number one crisis in our city and we made those investments. $53 million to expand our behavioral health programs and other health services in San Francisco. And thank you, Supervisor Mandelman, for your support and leadership around mental health reform in our city. We've already opened 100 new mental health stabilization beds on top of what we already have. And with this additional funding, we'll be able to uh, open another 100 new beds by the end of this year. We also have a need for people to use the bathroom. So we're adding more pit stops, we're adding more big belly trash cans, we're adding more targeted street cleaning, and we're using our 311 data to really make those investments strategically in the right places. We're deploying another 250 officers, hopefully, as we get them across the finish line of the academy so that they can walk the beat in various neighborhoods, talk to merchants, get to know the communities, and help with preventing crime from happening in the first place. 
We know that our commercial corridors in so many neighborhoods need so much help and support. So we've made investments to support facade improvements, tenant improvements, pay various fines and fees and other things that we know small business communities face, including seven businesses right here in the Richmond District who will benefit from some of the new small business investments our city proposes to make. It's the beginning. There's more that we need to do to protect and support our small businesses. And I have been fighting with my director of small business because I want us, Regina, to cut even more fees for small businesses in San Francisco so that it's not a burden to them staying open in the city. <laughs> Through hard work, the minimum compensation ordinance was done. It was, it was brutal, Rudy, but we got through it. And so many very low income wage earners in San Francisco are gonna get a well-deserved raise and have already in some cases. We've expanded our CalFresh program and our county assistance program. And we know that equity was at the forefront of this budget. And thanks to the leadership of Supervisor Valley Brown and Supervisor uh, Fewer, they helped to create an office of equity where we are making investments to really try and shine a light on what we know are real challenges around access, education, affordability, and the things that continue to show really racial disparities that, need to take, that we need to take a look at, provide the data, and really make the right investments to turn it around. Opportunities for All, as you all know, is a program that's near and dear to my heart, making sure that every high school student in San Francisco has access to a paid internship, and I want to thank all of the city departments for stepping up and providing internships, and now it's time to hold the private sector accountable to not only contribute, because they definitely contributed to opportunities for all, but they need to have more placements for our young people, and that is what I'm committed to moving forward. Thank you to Supervisor Marr, who is not here with us today. Um, we work together to fully fund free City College for San Francisco. So I just wanna say to all of our senior folks who are here today, you don't have to be a young person to go to City College. You don't have to be a kid living at home on your parents to go to City College. City College is for all San Franciscans, so let's take advantage of the amazing classes that they have. And one of the things I wanna mention before I turn this over to Supervisor Fewer is I know that as mayor, I don't necessarily have complete control over our Board of Education. But I went to public schools here, and, and, and we know that Supervisor Yi and Fewer also went to public schools here in San Francisco. And the, the challenges that sometimes exist at certain schools versus other schools is something we need to address when we talk about equity. And so for the first time ever, this city is making significant investments in addressing what we know are the biggest challenges at those schools. It includes teacher retention, at certain schools in the southeast sector and other parts of the city, we're making a $10 million investment to provide additional bonuses to teachers in those uh, particular schools to make sure that we try and hold on to them to work with so many kids that have what we know sometimes are real challenges. But we're also making investments in wellness centers in our public schools to make sure that kids have the support that they need when going through what we know can be a very challenging time in their lives. So many great things. So, I mean, again, 12.3 million, I can be here all day talking about all of the things that we're doing to make the right kinds of investments. But I just wanted to highlight those few to let you know that in addition to these investments, as I had said from the very beginning, it is important that we understand the value of a dollar, the value of how this city makes investments and what it means to people's lives. It can be the difference between a young person ending up dead or in prison or in some terrible situation and someone ending up mayor of San Francisco. And that's how I see our investments, as an opportunity to make sure that good things happen 
for people here in San Francisco, and we create a better future with these incredible investments. So make sure all the departments, you spend this money wisely. You don't take pens and paper home that you don't need. And you do your very best to show folks in this city that we are the greatest city in the world because we put our money where our mouth is, and because of that, we're able to create a more thriving, equitable, safe, and secure city for all San Franciscans. Thank you all so much for being here. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to our budget chair, Sup Supervisor Sandy Fewer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, good morning, everyone. Wow. On behalf of my 80,000 residents in the Richmond District, I want to welcome you to this part of town where our summers look like this every day. <laughs> but where we are doing good work to strengthen and grow community. The Richmond District Neighborhood Center is leading that effort with the work on the One Richmond Initiative, the Home Delivered Grocery Program, and is the main provider of after-school programming in the Richmond. I'd like to thank Executive Director Michelle Cusano and her staff for hosting us today. And thank you all for coming out. Well, I am glad that the budget is being officially finalized today as we gather to witness the signing of the budget by the mayor. I am also appreciative that I was given the opportunity to serve the city in the capacity as budget chair this year. This, as most of you know, is a process that involves the expertise, commitment, and hard work of many. So I would like to take a moment now to recognize and thank them. Chelsea Boylard, I know she's here somewhere. My legislative aide, worked tire tirelessly meeting with community groups, laying and designing the entire budget process, and it was the go-to person with all things budget related. Our interns for the summer helped us tremendously on the budget, working behind the scenes. So, so many thanks to Jackie, Marissa, and Jimmy. I must, I must also acknowledge my other legislative aides, Angelina and Ian, who kept the office running and the needs of my district addressed while Chelsea and I were deeply immersed in the city budget. I'd like to thank the members of the budget committee, President Yee, Supervisors Mandelman, Stephanie, and Ronan. After many long hours, shared anxieties, and a lot of learning, it is with a sigh of relief and pride that we are at this point in the process. Many thanks and recognition to the wonderful budget legislative analyst with whom we work closely with and depended on heavily for guidance and recommendations. I want to thank our controller and his office for all the support, advice, and expertise. And many thanks to the mayor's budget office and to Mayor Breed for working so closely with us to ensure a smooth and collaborative process. My deepest appreciation for the clerk's office, and in particular, Linda Wong, for keeping me on track. And thank you, John Gibner, for keeping us legit. <laughs> of course, this process would not be complete without the voices behind the $400 million in community asks. So thank you, community advocates, who took the time to educate us on how this budget can help supply the needed support and safety net for our most vulnerable in this city. And lastly, I would like to thank the city workers, the backbone of our city that makes the whole machine work to serve our residents. I want to especially thank our department heads who fight not only for their budgets, but for their ability to serve the people of San Francisco well. Honorable work beyond measure, and most of the time without recognition or appreciation, these devoted, dedicated public servants. This budget prioritizes the issues of affordable housing development, the expansion of beds for homeless residents, and rental subsidies for some of our most vulnerable tenants. It focuses on services and support for marginalized communities, including children, seniors, and people with disabilities, immigrants, communities of color, LGBT communities, low-income residents, and workers. With an ever-changing wealth, ever-growing wealth gap, and inequitable opportunities by race, language, gender, sexuality, and more, 
more, it is critical that we invest in ensuring that every San Franciscan can thrive. I think this is a budget that reflects those values. This is a budget that says, to those of you who are struggling to stay here, for those of you who are struggling to survive here, we see you. Thank you again to Mayor Breed and to President Norman Yee for entrusting me with this responsibility. And now that it's all over, I'm not sure actually that my colleagues or my um, staff would agree, but I think I'm willing to do this for another five years. <laughs> I want to thank all of my colleagues at the board, especially budget committee members, supervisors Catherine Stephanie, Raphael Mandeman, Hillary Ronan, and Norman Yee for your confidence and collaboration. Thank you to the people of San Francisco who entrust us with the money earned off the hard backs, uh, the backs of hardworking San Franciscans. And now let's get this thing signed. And I'd like to present now the president of the board, Norman Yee. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't hide the fact that I'm freezing. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, welcome, everybody. This, is, this district is the most important district in the northwest sector of San Francisco. <laughs> I really want to thank the mayor, your staff, and I'm, I know I'm going to be repeating my, um, what's been said, but you know it's worth repeating when people work so hard to put the most important uh, document together for San Franciscans. So once again, Mayor, um, your director over there, uh, Kelly Kits, uh, Kirkpatrick, you know, thank you very much, and your team, thank you very much, uh, Ben Rosenfield, and uh, your team, and is Harvey here today? I didn't see him. But the budget um, legislative analyst, BLA, thank you for putting this budget together. But you know, more importantly, when I became president in January, one of the first things I said was that I'm gonna make this Board of Supervisors, this set of 11 people, the best that we can ever have in San Francisco to serve our community, to serve our residents, to serve the most vulnerable. And the most important committee to help serve these people is the budget committee. And I knew I had to make the strongest budget committee that I could think of. So as mentioned, it was really an, um, an honor for me to ask Supervisor Fiore to be the chair of the budget committee. And I was so happy because she kept on saying, Oh, no, no, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I said, for Christ's sake, Sandy! <laughs> you were a chair on a budget committee in, on the board of, uh, board of Education. I mean, yes, you know how to do budgets. You're as good as anybody, anybody on the Board of Supervisors. So thank you for accepting that, and you did a gr marvelous job. Give her a hand. But like all of us, one person can't do it all. So she needed a team. She needed four other supervisors to sort of round up the team. That, it, that includes uh, Supervisor Manaman right here. Thank you, Supervisor Manaman. Um, and Supervisor Ronan and Supervisor uh, Stephanie uh, were also part of that team. And uh, to really make it special and really the greatest team, I put myself on it. <laughs> You know, seriously, seriousness. <laughs> um, I'm really glad that this budget was put, put together the way it was, and it was as transparent as I've seen it in over the last seven years. Uh, people were engaged. People had a voice. People, everybody felt like they had a voice, and that was because of the openness of everybody, not only the budget committee, but also the mayor's office. Advocates came, uh, we went out to the community ask, and we put a, a budget together that was that has, to me, one of the more um, 
uh, best budget I've seen because it's we're beginning to look at the issues and see what we need to do to solve it. We needed to do new things. We needed to be creative in in putting the money where it could be effective. <coughs> and I think people really looked at it carefully in with those lens. You know, how do we get equity on this? How do we serve the people? How do we make sure that people could be successful, whether whether they're regular people working, whether there are people on the street that can't work right now, whether it's the, it's the children that we're talking about that they could succeed to be great adults, and and, and also our seniors. Um, this not you can't say enough that we're, we're the fastest growing population in San Francisco are the seniors, and we need to make investments because as you as many of you know, right now. Over 50% of the people f entering homelessness for the first time are seniors. So we need to make investments, and I think this budget reflects that need. So thank you very much for that. And the other thing that I want to say that hasn't been mentioned in this budget is, you know, um, when, when families are struggling already, they could barely pay the rent, and all of a sudden they're strapped with child care, maybe for one child, 25000 a year, or two children, that'd be 50000 a year. I mean, come on. A teacher couldn't afford that. Nobody could afford that. And so, once again, this budget reflects th that need where we're tr really trying to support not only the low-income but the middle-income families that are struggling to raise their children in San Francisco. So this is what this budget does. On top of all that, we don't we didn't forget about our infrastructure. We did not forget about our parks, our fire department, our police department, and, and uh, our department of public works to uh, have more staff to clean up the streets and so forth. So this is what this budget does. It supports the infrastructure, and it also is creative to find solutions where we need to find solutions. So let's get it on. Sign this budget. Thank you very much. All right, folks, it is time. <laughs> Let's do this. Supervisors, please join me. Here we go. Thank you. All right, we're done. Thank you.